Uh, ah, here it is. Fanful, fainful. Causes those who hear the incantation to lose all consciousness. That is an overpowered spell. We must not forget, the Great Witch can use any and all magic at will. But didn't she say she heard it? <laughs> Witness, amend your testimony to reflect this important piece of information! Yes, right away. Oh boy. I can't believe she managed to get out of that one. And every freaking other one! But still, I'm not going to give up just yet. Hell no. <laughs> I'll keep going until we finally get to the bottom of this. Of this, who is the attacker really? Now, now then, let us continue with the interrogation, shall we? Come on, chit chat. Let's go. <laughs> I heard the incantation for Fainful, and before I could even turn around. Hold it! You heard the incantation? Are you absolutely sure about that? Yes, there's no mistaking it. The attacker used magic to vanish from sight, went up the stairs, and then rendered the witness unconscious, also with magic. Clearly, this must be the work of none other than the Great Witch Bezella. It is no mere coincidence that the attacker was able to use such spells. This is certainly no ordinary witch. Afterwards, the witness's attacker carried her off. Naturally, that would require the use of both hands, one would think. Both hands, High Inquisitor? In other words, the witch would not have been able to hold Italia Magica. Ah! Oh! Right. And the only witch that doesn't need a scepter like that is... Bazella. I see you have somehow managed to get through your thick skull defender. Very well. Continue, please, Mr. Miss Witness. Yes. Hold it. Hold it. Didn't you, didn't Dark Claw just say that the witch, Great Witch, didn't have to say any incantation and anything yet? You heard the incantation. Hold it! Objection! Objection! What the hell? <laughs> Miss Kira, I have watched you at the witness stand this entire, entire freaking trial. Desperately trying to keep something hidden from the rest of the courtroom! Yeah, that's right! I wonder if you're familiar with the saying, A lie begets more lies? It means, multiple lies are bound to unravel and leave your story with more holes than Swiss cheese. What's Swiss cheese? That's besides the point! Since they don't know what Swiss is. <laughs> Pretty sure. Get to the point, Defender. I was, thank you very much. According to the Grand Grimoire, Fainful causes a person to lose all consciousness, right? It's written here in black and white, right? <laughs> right? Right? It affects, takes the, takes hold the second the incantation is heard. Oh. Miss Kira, you testified as follows. You heard the incantation for Fainful and immediately became aware of the presence of your attacker. Then you put up a fight! But, if you really did hear that incantation, there's no way you would have been able to yank the pendant from your assailant. Yeah, that's the point too, actually. I forgot to say, but 
Then, uh, yeah. But... Anyway, get to the point. You're wrong, damn it, and I proved it. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Order. Order! What is the meaning of this? The meaning is that Miss Kira didn't actually hear the incantation like she claims she did. But then... Why? Why on earth was this girl unconscious? Kara was definitely knocked out by whoever attacked her. And when she woke up, she found herself on the top floor of the bell tower. It's possible Miss Kira was rendered unconscious by... Something other than magic, maybe? Yes! Another witch, of course! The answer here is obvious. Something other than magic must have knocked her out. Objection. Scratch! And what, may I ask, makes you certain of that? Is it not possible that another spell could have been used? Objection. No. <laughs> no? That's just not possible! You of all people should know that! What? Miss Kara's claim that she heard someone say the incantation is completely false. Throw it out the window! Even so... That wouldn't be too much of a problem if she actually had heard an incantation. That, that's right. However, by going, going by her testimony, that can't have been the case. The only spell capable of making someone lose consciousness is painful, obviously. Isn't that right, High Inquisitor Darkwall? Yeah, because you study the grimoire all the time. You should know that. Defender, are you claiming there is another way besides magic that could have been used to render Miss Kira unconsciousness? Or unconscious? Yes. Bash her over the friggin' head, duh! <laughs> There's only one other thing that crossed my mind. I'm speaking, of course, about sleeping me medicine. Or, or sleeping medicine. Sleeping medicine works too, I guess. Yeah. Not bashing her over the head. I mean, obviously she'd have a huge bump on her head, right? Right? <laughs> sleeping medicine? Wait! Like... From say a certain uh, a certain place that use alchemy or something. If you remember, Mascara stated that the attacker covered her mouth before she could scream, hence putting the medicine in her mouth. In doing that, the attacker was able to administer the a potent sleep medicine, thus putting Kira out like a light. Hmm, indeed. That does make sense. Therefore, Your Honor, the attacker did not necessarily have to be the Zella. I mean, why would an all-powerful being capable of commanding any and all kind of magic need to resort to drugging someone? Objection! Scratch! Hold it right there, Defender! They managed to sneak past the guards and make their way up into the bell tower! Scratch! Clearly, they must have used magic to appear invisible. Objection. OBJECTION! You don't need magic to make yourself disappear, High Inquisitor. Throw this on, and getting past those guards at the tower is a piece of cake. The robe of invisibility. But, despite all that, there's still one glaring problem. Miss Kira. Yes? You admitted to the court earlier that you were attacked from the front, correct? If that's the case, then there's only one possible conclusion we can draw. You, Miss Kira, were entirely capable of seeing your attacker's face! Why is that? I didn't! It's simple. 
You even said it yourself. Only residents of the Eldwitch Woods are able to see this robe. That means, Miss Kira, there is a piece of this puzzle only you could possibly know. Only you can tell us the identity of the person who entered the bell tower and attacked you tonight! I can't tell you. No matter what happens, I just can't tell you, no matter what. You see, everyone, this witness has been covering up for someone from the very start of this trial! What? But luckily for us, we won't be needing any more of Miss Kira's testimony. Go on. Get out of the witness stand. We don't need you anymore. Because the answer is staring us right in the face. Right in the face. I'm speaking, of course, about the true identity of Miss Kira's attacker. All the clues so far point to this one person. Defender, I take it you are prepared to prove such a serious accusation? Oh, hell yeah, I am! I am! <laughs> Alright, it looks like it all comes down to this. Now we'll finally see who's been pulling the strings this whole time. Very well, Defender, tell the court. Who was the one responsible for attacking the witness and locking her up on the top of the floor of the bell tower? It was the storyteller! I mean, after all, he's on the te- No! He- Yeah! Even so, he would still be technically, I think, on the tower at this point, so, no, or coming down from the tower, so no! And he was dead, kinda, and he was on the, he was in the parade right at this moment, so no. It was Eve, the cat! Yes, because Eve has been very suspicious. Yep. It was the vigilantes, they were there the entire time. No, I was Dark Lodge, damn it! The answer is obvious, Your Honor. I mean, she's been looking right at her very strangely this entire time. It was you! Hi, Inquisitor Darklaw! What? What? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to prove for Barnum's sake that you are it. Order. Order! Order in the court! I inconceivable. There's no way! I must say, Defender, your courage is impressive. However reckless you may be, accusing High Inquisitor is no small feat. I assure you, after all, Barnum is in prison for doing such a thing. However, with serious accusations, do come serious consequences. One small misstep, and I will personally see that you never set foot in this courtroom ever again. Mark my words, Defender. I understand. Hm. My... How confident! Scratch! Let us see if that confidence of yours is well justified! Miss Kira's attacker drugged her with sleep medicine. It likely took no more than a few seconds for her to lose consciousness. The medicine must have been very potent. 
true. After all, its effects appear somewhat similar to magic. There's only one person I can think of in all of Labyrinthia who could supply you with that kind of medicine. Sir Newton Belduke. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't know if I'll edit that out, but for some reason I just decided to black out. Anyways, Defender, you are aware that Sir Beltuk has been deceased for over three months now. Are you not? That's a fact I'm well aware of. Believe me, I was doing the defending of the trial where he was talked about. While he was still alive, Sir Belduc provided the citizens of this town with a variety of medicines for whatever ailed them. But it wasn't all just medicine. He also created some very dangerous concoctions. That's why, after he passed away, all of his medicines and creations were confiscated. C -c confiscated and Christopher Barnum said as much in the last witch trial. The victim was an alchemist, after all. We were hoping the items confiscated from his study could have provided some clues. Besides, such things must not fall into the wrong hands. It may not be standard practice, but it was deemed necessary. The confiscated goods are stored in our secrets of vault. The only person with access to them is the High Inquisitor Lady Darklaw. Ah! Oh, no way. Objection! <laughs> Scratch! So! Because I have access to the medicine, I must be the one that used it. Is that what you are getting at, Defender? That's right! Unfortunately for you, I would hardly call that proof. You said it yourself. Sir Beldu concocted a plethora of dangerous medicines in his efforts to assist the people of a town. He was well known for this fact, a fact that we no he no doubt was none too pleased with. Scratch! As such, it is highly likely that those same dangerous substances are still scattered throughout the town. And therefore, Defender, it is entirely possible that the culprit was able to get their hands on such a dangerous medicine. Hmm. Indeed, now that you say that, yes. Long as Sir Belduc's medicine played an active part in maintaining the health of this town's citizens, there is plenty of reason to believe some of his more dangerous medicine still remains within Labyrinthia. Hmph, a piece of advice, Defender. The next time you speak in court, I recommend you try procuring some real evidence before spouting such idiotic accusations. <laughs> if you fail to do so, your next words will be uttered into the flames, like witches. <laughs> Figures. I knew she wouldn't take that argument sitting down. Both High Inquisitor Darklaw and Barnum are very are the very Harbin brand wait Harbingers of justice within Labyrinthia. Raising such an accusation against either one of them without valid reason will result in the most severe of punishments. Yeah, but guess what? Barnum also thought this and Guess what? Freaking Darklaw put him, put her in. So it seems like if she would have accused Barnum, then she should go to jail. So seriously, there's something wrong with that law there. What does he mean by the most severe of punishments? 
I think the judge is saying that if we don't start making a case, we're gonna be paying Sir Belduke a visit real soon in the flames over there. I need to present some decisive evidence and fast! I'm pretty sure I should be able to do that much. High Inquisitor Darklaw is the attacker, and the one that proves it. The one thing that proves it is... Dark Law herself? I... I don't know why, uh... Well, first of all, I don't see any kind of thing that would be in the... in here. And then... The presenting a profile. There's nothing. Like, here is not gonna say anything, obviously, so that's the only thing that would say anything. Storyteller! He's supposedly dead still on this side. So Dark Law herself is the only thing, which does she have a scratch on her. Cause after all, she's not a wit great witch and the great witch and so she doesn't have a way to actually heal herself instantly. The defense believes there is one clue here linking High Inquisitor to the crime. Darklaw to the crime. High Inquisitor! That clue is actually still on you right now! Uh, on me? I must admit, I do not know where you are going with this defender, but please point out this clue to the court. Show us this clue supposedly still on the High Inquisitor's person! Like, like, right there? Right there! Yes! The, the, the High Inquisitor's neck? You don't mean... Miss Kira yanked this pendant off of her attacker's neck. Take a look at the necklace. It still has a little bit of blood left on it, after all. And you have been covering your neck a lot lately. Miss Darklaw. According to the, her earlier testimony, when Miss Kira pulled at the necklace, she supposedly felt herself scratch the attacker's neck. Is that correct, Miss Kira? Y yes. Therefore, ergo, <laughs> I like that word, the attacker should still have a mark on their neck from having been scratched! Oh... Would you mind letting the court take a look at your neck? High Inquisitor Dark Law? I'm pretty sure, I am pretty damn sure, that underneath that high collar, we'll find exactly the mark we're looking for. Being brought down a little bit like Von Karma here. Unless, of course, you were able to get rid of it with magic. Hey, Dark Law, do you know a little bit of magic? Or are you not wanting to show to the court? Which would kind of be a little suspicious, wouldn't you say, Judge? Yes, that would be suspicious, Dark Law. Show us on your neck. Right. Now. Hmph. Most impressive. What did you just say? I have to say, Defender, you've managed to finally hone that dull blade of yours into something of use. You are correct. There is, in fact, a mark on my neck that I did receive tonight. Oh, really? What? Lady Dark Law? What is the meaning of this? Does that mean Lady Dark Law is? The 
great witch? Well, if she was the great witch, she should have healed herself. True. Your honor! Uh, uh, oh! Uh, yes! I see her here still here, Defender! Sorry, I was in La La Land for a second. <laughs> your honor. I know you're shocked and everything, but come on! Work with me here a little! <laughs> your honor, the defense would like to call High Inquisitor Darklaw to the witness stand. What did you say? It's quite clear that the High Inquisitor has some connection to what transpired tonight. And what's more, there is a chance that she used her position of authority as High Inquisitor to frame my client as the Great Witch! But never in all my years as a judge of this court has an Inquisitor been asked to take the stand in the middle of a trial! Well, we're going to have to make some history here if we're going to finally find the truth, Your Honor. And even so... This trial cannot continue any further without an Inquisitor. Darklaw would be sent to the witness stand, and... And Barnum is in jail! <laughs> we'll get him out of jail! <laughs> Sorry, but Darklaw ordered it! But she's... Just... Sorry, Dark... Hey, um, in that case, how about you get Inquisitor Dark... I told you! Inquisitor Bonham remains incarcerated in the underground dungeons for the crime of treason against the storyteller. Hey! No! And the... The, the crime of treason against you? Hey! That ain't right whatsoever. I don't think he will be able to make it to this party. <laughs> no way! Most regrettable, Defender. I guess we can't see if I really was the Great Witch or not. <laughs> this whole thing is hopeless. Unless High Inquisitor Darklaw takes the witness stand. Man, Phoenix is really thinking now. Espella will be done for. The truth along with her. But on the other hand, without an Inquisitor on the other side, the trial can't continue, and the outcome would end up the same. What should I do? Hold it. I believe I can fill that role. Professor, wait, what are you saying? I can prove conclusively that Espella Cantabella is, in fact, the great witch Bazella. <gasps> now, Mr. Wright, the time has come at last to settle this once and for all. We'd been waiting for the professor to show up. If there was anyone who could find some decisive evidence to win this thing, it was him. However, he ended up standing behind the Inquisitor's bench. The professor wasn't on our side here. I had to wonder what the heck was going to happen. <laughs> 